up, everyone? Today we have a Craftsman four cycle weed eater. Um, carb itself doesn't seem to be too bad. The fuel lines are a little rough, so we'll be replacing those. Um, but that is not good. So we're gonna see if it's the motor. I don't think so. I think it's the pull start though. And we'll see what we have to do. We might have to get a new pull start. I'm hoping not, but it is what it is if it is. I think I've had to do one of these before and to take it off wasn't horrible. A real pain. You have to remember where the screws go. Am I missing one? That was just a clip. I think it's one down here. Few lines aren't. No, they're still pretty nasty, but they're not nearly as bad as I had originally thought. And the allergies today are rough. So these are for for the start. And I'm supposed to be able to put like a, um, like a drill in here and give it a start, but I don't know about that personally. exactly is going on here. It's like the dogs are just not on there. What a weird little system. So, when it spins, if you're pulling it this way, it's going to be spinning. So, that seems fine. That seems fine. Just that these little springs that are bad. Okay, so let's figure this out. If you are pulling like this, that means that we'll, they are going to have to get caught. And getting caught is going like that. system. Just the piece broken somewhere? 
I feel like it's supposed to go like this more. And maybe they just fell off the person that put then put it on right. Let's test that theory. Maybe a little pain to put it on now. What do you even put this on? Does this come off? No, not really. At least not the way I would hope it would have. It's a pretty janky little system. So how do you ensure you're putting it on right? Let me figure this out real quick. Okay, so we're back to this. It's been a couple days. Um, let me explain why. I was wondering what was actually holding these in place. And I mean obviously there's a spring, but the spring is not gonna it's keeping it pushed out. So I, I looked on the internet and I looked at a picture of them and this is what I found. There's actually this little clip that's on the bottom of both of them that holds them into a open open position. Both of those clips fell uh, broke off both of them so now they're they're not doing anything. So I ordered a new set. The annoying part is let's see, is it easier to flip it over? Part is there are these tiny little C clips on the back. So I'm gonna take a small pair of pliers and try to work those off and put them back on, and then we'll uh, put the pull start back on and see what we have to do with this carb. I'm sure, it's also gonna need some love. Okay, well that was annoying. Um, after the clips got put in, springs back. Now it's good to go. It stops can tell the little tabs are broken off these. I don't know how both of them broke at the same time. I suppose weirder things have happened. Now, let's take off the carb. There's a, a piece that's holding this little bracket on, but it goes all the way back. Maybe if I just take so and take out. There we go. 
So when I took the red cover off, these came off as well. Over here there's a black line. Let's take that off. That actually seems to be fine. I don't think that's a fuel item. Must be the return one. Yeah, it's the return one. Okay. Well, we'll replace it anyway. So, here's our carb. Looks like a fairly standard carb. So let's go ahead and will this gasket come off? Let's go over to the carb station and see what we have here. Okay, so first thing is just taking off this line. It's not horrible. This might have ran without um, a carb kit. I never even was able to test it out because the pull start was bad. So, but I did twist it over manually with the um, pull start off, and it definitely has compression. And when I got it, it has fuel in it. I'm sure that feels old. Sometimes there's these little metal pieces that I like to hide in there. So let's remember that it slides on this end. Uh, this thing is on there, so we're not going to worry about this is easy enough to come off. Looks like just a standard square. Um, diaphragm. Thing is, on the diaphragm, the little circle piece in the center, there's this little area that makes contact with the actual needle and you have to make sure you don't put one that's too long on it or too short. They're usually the same size but steels for instance they have to change it up. I'll just say it would have ran, but probably not very well. Usually this piece comes off too. something holding this on. Oh, that's not good. I'd have bent the tube. Don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Okay. I think disaster is avoided. I don't really see anything else holding it on. There we go. Yeah, this is the piece I want to take off, actually, with the needle out, though. I don't like putting. needles in an ultrasonic cleaner, especially the rubber tipped ones. The other ones I don't really care. 
But the rubber tipped ones definitely I don't like to. Just say no. Corresponding gasket. We have a razor blade, but I don't know where it went. The weird thing is, I've said that so many times. Oh yeah, this is just crumbling apart. Of course, I'm not necessarily being Mr. Gentle with it. I do have a kit for this, so... A little spring, I'll take that off. That's the main jet right there. Hopefully the ultrasonic cleaner makes this a little easier to get off. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in there. While that's running, I'm going to change the fuel lines and I'll be right back. So I'm not going to lie, I have no idea um, how long it's been. I've had multiple problems happen with this machine. Um, I got the kit in, that's good, but um, I ended up, that's not going to sneeze, oh, oh my gosh, okay, anyway, um, I ended up, when I was putting the, um, the fuel lines on the fuel tank, it didn't have the, I didn't have the right size of fuel lines. If you don't have the right interior diameter and the right exterior diameter, when it goes directly into the, the tank, um, one of them will start leaking. It's inevitable. So, I had to order some, a line finally came in. So now we can continue on with the rebuild of this carb. Just make sure everything's the same. And it looks like it definitely is. Okay, that's good. That is a little bit of a taller ramp. That's a taller ramp, that's good. Well, I mean the ramp. Uh, let me take it down to show you. So if you can see this little uh, piece that's coming off the top of the actual metal part, it's, it has a different thickness. And you want to make sure you get the right one. And I know this towel is dirty, but I usually blow it off. I need to get a new one. I'm going to go ahead and put you back up. So all that seems to be the same. Next we have this. When possible, I like to use the plastic ones. Because they just seem to last longer. Gasket looks good. That one's fine. Let's see if this plastic one is... I do believe so. Just for good comparison. I don't like using these out. <coughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to use the plastic one. Hey, look, I got an extra. That's always nice to have. And then inside, there's also a new needle. Uh, fuel filter inside the carb and the gaskets for the outside. I don't really like using a new needle. I like using the old one, just cleaning it. Just never was a real good thing for me. So this is pretty dirty. I'm going to wire wheel that. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so that looks good. Inside it looks pretty good. Garage dog is deciding to sit next to me. Which is always good. Making sure all that's clean. Looks like it is. So now, let's go ahead and put this on. So I'm going to use the plastic one. Put this like so. And then we need this one. Oh, no, plastic. I guess this one did come with the actual machine. I do like using the plastic ones instead. Uh, whatever, we'll put the one that the machine came with. Okay. Now well, that's on. Let's put the... Oh wait, I almost forgot. This is the problem when you do something weeks after. I forgot to put the little spring back on. Look at that nice cleaning. Spring. Back right there. The spring kind of makes it a little difficult to line it up sometimes, so. Sometimes you have to use the... Oh, well, also makes it easier when you put it on the right way. There we are. Let's put the... This little spring... Our needles on the arm and the pins in there. You grab it from the needle. You guide the needle at first. I'll do it from the other end because this fuel line is, well, not fuel line, the fuel inlet is kind of in the way. And there we are. Now we need the little screw that goes in there, holds the pin down. down. Like so. And I'll put the diaphragm down. Like so. Where's the top area? Go about it flying everywhere. Back down. Four long screws. If there's any obstruction in this, it's probably a gasket or a diaphragm you don't want to push too hard. It means you have to start over a little bit, take it off, keep on trying something else. 
This is the wrong size of screwdriver for this one. They're diagonally tight to them. They don't need to be super tight, but definitely tight enough to make sure it has a sufficient seal. Potentially you can warp the little plate. And that's a place that's prime for leakage. Part, trying to remember which way this went on. Okay, let's think about this. The throttle. Let me look at the machine. Sideways on a machine, throttle cable pulls down. This is idle, full throttle. And so, well, not full, but you get the point. Okay, so that looks good. Sometimes on Echoes, there's this tiny little piece that will be in the inside of the carburetor. It's like this little tiny brass, uh, not even a bead, but like a hollow bead. And that will fall out. And that falls out, yours will not work. So keep that in mind. We're going to use the new one. We're going to put this in the carburetor stash. And put it back on, put the new fuel lines on, bring everyone back. Okay, so finally got the cover on. That was no easy feat. Um, one thing wouldn't catch, and another one would, and the tank wasn't fitting correctly. It was just a giant pain. And naturally, when you cut the fuel lines it's going to be a little bit too short than what you actually needed it to be. So there in one is another potential problem. But I did find out don't actually put the fuel lines on. Put the fuel lines through the hole. Let's see if you can see that. Through the holes here. Because one is in, one is out. So just kind of mark them in one way. Memorize which one is the longest one. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But remember which one it is. That way you can connect it correctly. So how you want it to run is you want to connect the fuel line into the carburetor that draws the fuel. And then out of the carburetor you want to take the primer bolt and it goes into the in. And then out goes directly to the um, back to the fuel tank. That way it kind of just circulates the fuel. You don't want it to be bit out of the primer bulb going into the carburetor. That's bad. So I'm going to change the oil real quick because it looked like it was a tad on the low end anyway.
the one good thing about these carburetors is that there's no adjustment except for maybe the idle. The idle will usually have a, at least some type of adjustment, but it should really be about it. This bad oil in my area, if you on your garbage day, or excuse me, your recycling day for your garbage, you can take up to five quarts of an oil can, or at least an oil container. It has to be an oil container, or at least something that can easily hold the oil. It can't be like a milk jug, though. But you can put it outside, and the recycling guy will just kind of get it. So. That's very convenient. Don't have to go to all the ports or you don't have to do any of that nonsense. This is 10W30 oil. Mm, let's put the cap on, but I think that's pretty good. case scenario, you'll burn a little oil. Okay, so that's on tight. Let's swing this bad boy around before we get ourselves even more oil. the primer bowl like 20 times earlier, but maybe it needs to do it now. Let's just go to, now let's leave on to.
Uh, like I said, there's only the idle. These do like to rev up a little higher. At least it sounds like it's higher, but I don't really think it is. Uh, looks like it's burning off some crap now. But, yeah. After a, about two weeks later, a whole bunch of small extra pieces of pipe or fuel line. I think we're pretty set. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. Put it run a little bit outside. It should be set to go. Okay, well, if you like what you see, definitely subscribe. I'll be posting more, and I will see everyone later, and definitely comment below. Bye.